Hi, this is Annie Brace, and I am answering readers' questions. And this is a question I get asked a lot, and it's detailed, of course, in great detail in This Naked Mind and in my book, The Alcohol Experiment. But the question is like, how specifically did I stop drinking? And one of the things that's so interesting about my journey and how I stopped drinking is that I did not stop with the alcohol experiment. So many people find freedom with the alcohol experiment. And again, that's always free at alcoholexperiment.com. Please join us, go through it. It's amazing, life-changing. And so many people, they find freedom with it. And it's, it's incredible. Unfortunately, other people go into the alcohol experiment and they get one, two, three days in and they feel like they're not making any traction. And that would have been me. I don't think I would have been able to stop drinking or even really change my relationship with alcohol, which is truly the goal without what I call a pause. And so I want to explain to you what a pause was. Now, this is me going back and looking at what worked for me and saying, okay, what, what was that? What worked? But the one thing I did that was so unique in my drinking journey is I had been doing what everybody else has been doing. And so you want to make a change in your life and say, okay, tomorrow's going to be different. I promise tomorrow's going to be different. Tomorrow, I'm going to remember how bad I feel right now. Tomorrow, I'm going to remember this hangover. I'm going to remember the regret about saying and doing the things the night before. I'm going to remember all my anxiety and I'm going to wake up in the morning and I'm not going to drink tomorrow because it's going to be different. And then of course, tomorrow would come and by 5 PM, I literally, as if I was a different person, that part of my brain that was concerned about my drinking was cut out of my mind. And it was just happy, go lucky. Oh, good. It's happy hour. What are we having tonight? Whatever the case is and, and over and over and over. And so I was almost as if I had two different people living inside of me. There was this very big voice that said, Hey, drinking is fine. It's what you do. Don't worry about it. And we love it. And then there was this very big voice that said, Hey, you're making yourself miserable. You're hurting yourself. You're hurting your family. You're hurting your health. You are like doing and saying things you absolutely regret. And so I had this competing nature and you know, the, the psychological word for that is cognitive dissonance. It's when you're fighting within yourself. And here's the thing. If we were to witness conflict, right? Like say we were watching television and people got into a fight on TV, we might feel a little something, right? But certainly if we saw it across the street from us, maybe our neighbors got into a fight with each other, we'd probably feel like our heart rate would go up. We'd feel a little pit of our stomach. If we were fighting with people in our own house, we would certainly feel bad, but we discount and actually ignore that there is often fighting happening in our own brain, fighting between the me that was like, drinking's great. And the me that was like, drinking's horrible all the time. And all of this fighting and that fighting, even though we don't consciously notice it because it's just become so natural. It's like, as if it's just drums that are forever playing in the background and they're so loud and they're so brutal. And we don't even notice it until they turn off. We're like, whoa, we don't notice this fighting, but it's incredibly painful and it's incredibly stressful. And I believe it's one of the things that we actually drink to avoid because it's so painful to be in constant conflict in yourself, to be constantly making yourself promises and breaking those promises, to be constantly giving yourself excuses, rationalizing your behavior, justifying your behavior is incredibly, incredibly painful. And so I think it's one of the reasons we continue to drink because we just want to numb some of that pain. And so for me, I actually had to take a break from that cycle, the cycle of trying to cut back and making myself promises and being unable to do it and trying again and making myself other rules and being unable to do it. I had to take a break from that. And that's what I call the pause. And so I did something kind of radical where I stopped trying to stop drinking. And again, I Naked mind, that's what we do inside our programs. You stop trying to stop drinking. And not in the alcohol experiment. The alcohol experiment is very different. It's a 30 day challenge. But in most of the programs where you realize you need a bit more than the alcohol experiment, we stop trying to stop drinking. And we do two things we awaken self compassion, we realize we are doing the best we can with the tools we have, and we learn something new. Now, there's three key things that every single person needs in order to change. They need action. They need to do something new. They need knowledge. They need to know something new and they need emotion. They need to feel something new. So these are the three key things. Now, here's the thing. Usually when we're trying to change, we just try with the action. We're like, okay, 
I'm going to start to exercise. And so tomorrow I'm putting on my running shoes and I'm going out running and we're just action, action, action. I'm going to, I'm going to drink less. So tomorrow only one glass of wine, action, action, action. And then we wonder why most New Year's resolutions only last 19 days, why it doesn't go very far. Well, it doesn't go very far because we haven't learned anything new. We don't know anything new. So in the alcohol experiment, you're getting all three of those at once. Every single day, you're going to learn something new. You're going to feel something new and you're going to be taking action. You're actually changing your behavior because you're not drinking for 30 days. In my experience, that wouldn't have worked for me. I actually had to reverse the order of how it's traditionally done. I had to learn everything new. I had to learn that alcohol actually doesn't relax me, that it releases cortisol and adrenaline, that it actually doesn't make things more fun, that it releases dynorphin and numbs my pleasure response to normal everyday things. I had to know these things, know something new. And then I felt something new. And then human beings, at the end of the day, we do what we feel like doing. And in fact, almost everything we do in life, it's to feel a certain way. And then when I felt something new, taking the action, you know, not actually drinking, or if drinking less is your goal, drinking less, whatever the goal was, that became easy. So my path included that pause. It included that time to let myself off the hook, to really learn something new, to feel something new. And I kept drinking during that time. I paused that cycle, that cycle, you know, when you're doing the same thing over and over and you're expecting different results, that was me for years. I was just trying to cut back. I was trying to force it. I was trying to use willpower. And I was expecting that one day I would just magically wake up and it would be easy. And it wasn't. And that's why this naked mind works. I was recently um, doing a podcast interview with a woman who's read this naked mind and found freedom. She went to rehab 27 times, 27 times before she found this naked mind. And now she's been free for years, years. And that's the difference when you learn and then you feel some knowledge and emotion before the action. And so that's how I stopped drinking. That's why this naked mind is so effective. Now, a lot of people, if you are not drinking as much as perhaps I was, or you're not kind of as far down, um, the picture plant, if you've read my books, uh, as, as I was, then doing all three at once is hugely effective. You can get knowledge, emotion, and action every single day at the alcohol experiment, alcoholexperiment.com. But if you are like me and you are in that cycle, and if you try the alcohol experiment, which I think everybody should as a first step, and you realize by day one or day two that you're in that cycle and it's just not working, you can't get traction, then I highly encourage you to step off that cycle, try something totally radical, totally new, take that pause and you know join something or read this naked mind where you can learn something new, feel something new before you actually try to implement the behavior change in your life. And that is how I stopped drinking. Another key thing that is so important to say about how I stopped drinking is I never made a behavior-based goal. I still don't have a behavior-based goal to this day. Meaning my goal is not to be sober. I don't even identify with being sober. My goal is not to never drink again. I'm not even gonna know that I was successful with that goal were it my goal until I was dead. My goal is actually emotion-based. My goal is how I want to feel. And I really encourage you to create a goal on how you want to feel. Because if you create a goal on how you want to feel, you're not gonna feel failure when you know try number one doesn't get you there. You're gonna be like, no, I'm gonna try something else. I'm gonna try something else. I'm gonna try something else. It's not gonna be this black and white. Well, if I, if I do that thing, then I'm a failure. Then I might as well give up and go home. You're gonna be like, no, that thing didn't make me feel how I wanted. So let me try something else to make me feel how I wanted. And so my goal for me, was to make alcohol small and irrelevant in my life. That was my goal. And when I was learning something new and when I was feeling something new, it was with the goal that alcohol would become small and irrelevant. And if that meant I drank on occasion, fine. If that meant I never drank again, fine. I was unattached to the behavior because I was so much more invested wanted to feel. So often I hear stories. It's one of the reasons that this whole conversation around drinking less is, is so stigmatized and loaded is because there are so many people who are not drinking, but they are still thinking about drinking. Drinking is still taking up so much mental real estate. They're still in so much pain because they are really consumed with alcohol even when they're not drinking it. And sometimes even more so when they're not drinking it than when they were. And that was certainly me. You know, I could take breaks, but I was so much more consumed with, it's just like, you know, if I was gonna say, okay, as of tomorrow, I'm not gonna eat any more French fries. What would I want? 
I would want French fries because I still think French fries are good, right? It's the same sort of concept and idea. So this, the other way uh, that I stopped drinking myself was really, it wasn't a goal to stop. It was never my goal to stop. And that just happened to be how I have achieved the goal that I did have, which was for alcohol to be small and irrelevant in my life.